I'm genuinely surprised by how low the rating is for the women on IMDb. This is the 2008 version. There is another version that I haven't seen, so I can't currently compare them. But I really thoroughly enjoyed this film. This was released in 2008, directed and written by Diane English. And it's got an absolutely brilliant cast, and that's the reason why it initially came on my radar, because I love Carrie Fisher. She's in it for about three minutes, but that doesn't matter, because I think the rest of the film was absolutely brilliant. I thought this would be a very typical... It's not really a rom-com, but it's a, it's a comedy drama, and I thought it would be quite typical and cliché. But actually, it really brought a lot to the table, and I'm surprised it hasn't been as well received. Maybe because people were perhaps comparing it to the other, I'm not really sure. But the description from IMDb is as follows. A wealthy New Yorker wrestles with the decision to leave her cheating husband, as she and her friends discover that women really can have it all. So this is all about the power of female friendship and being your own woman. Most of the women in this are at the top of their game. They're either very successful in their careers. We have a journalist, um, various other kind of high-profile careers. And they have a lot of money, either their own money or through their husbands. You know, They spend their days shopping, getting manicures, the usual kind of thing that one would expect from this kind of high-society comedy. But as we found out, Mary Haynes, played by Meg Ryan, finds out that her husband is cheating on her and she has to weigh up the option of leaving him and what that will mean for her and what empowerment that could bring to her. And the film is all about empowering the woman and of obviously the importance of friendship. Mary has a daughter and through her daughter it looks at the, the next generation. She's played by India Enenga and absolutely fantastic performance uh, I think she did a great job at playing the next generation and the problems that being a, a young woman face um, honestly there's nothing about this I didn't like I thought the pacing was great it's about two hours maybe just under and I thought well this might drag but it's actually lovely it's really heartwarming it's very easy to watch the characters are all really likeable apart from our antagonist with whom Mary's husband is having an affair. That's Crystal, played by Eva Mendes. We also have Annette Benning, Deborah Messing. I also have to say Annette Benning was amazing. She's my favourite in this. Second to Carrie Fisher, of course. Jada Pinkett Smith's in this. Bette Midler is in it for a brief stint. It's it's a very well cast, very, very well cast film. I particularly like Joanna Gleason in this. She plays Barbara. She's not in it too much, um, but I do, I do enjoy her when she's in things. So I think it's nice. I think it gets the message across very well. I think the casting is perfect. They all go well together. Everybody has a role to play. The characters have all different personalities. They're not carbon copies of one another, which is often the case with this kind of film. The set designs are gorgeous. We have some beautiful scenery, gorgeous buildings, sensational architecture, really high society lifestyles being represented here which is always something that we love to watch on film because we watch films to escape into a world that we haven't got most of us haven't got that lifestyle and it's gorgeous to watch and i love it we spend a lot of time in sacks i don't know if that was actually sacks or if they remodeled it i don't know how much it would have cost them to film in sacks but i thought it was absolutely beautiful the film has several really good nominations and awards but it also has some really bad ones. Um, so it was nominated for the AARP movies for Grown Ups, Best Actress, Best Supporting Actress, um, Best Actress in Film for the Alma Awards, and Best Actress International went to Meg Ryan at the Bambi Awards. It was also, it, it won the Hall of Shame at the Women Film Critics Circle Awards. It was nominated for the Worst Actress Razzie for basically everybody in this, which is despicable. Even if you don't like the film, you can't really say that the acting was bad because it, it definitely wasn't. I have absolutely no issues with any of the performances in this whatsoever. And it was also nominated for... Um, oh, sorry, it won both the movie you wanted to love but just couldn't and remake that shouldn't have been made awards at the Alliance of Film Journalists. So I'm quite outraged at, at those awards because it does not deserve it. I think maybe some people didn't get what they were trying to do with this. Um... Maybe some people are jealous that it's depicted in a high society situation. 
Whereas it would have worked just as well if these were, these were women who were perhaps not as wealthy and as well off. But personally, I thought it was great fun. I'd really happily watch it again. I'd give it a 6.57 out of 10, I think, is a pretty decent rating. I thought the women was great. I will watch the one that came before it. Honestly, quite disheartened that it's got such a low rating because I truly enjoyed it.